All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Sunil Barma and with me is Vaibhav Jyotsna Srivastav. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi asks ministers and officials to find out ways to boost manufacturing and global imprint of Indian toys. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh reviews overall security scenario in eastern Ladakh. Health Minister Harshwadhan says country will have vaccine against coronavirus by the end of this year. More than 22 lakh people recover from COVID-19 in the country so far. Minister of State in PMO Jitendra Singh says states and union territories can use common eligibility tests to be conducted by a national recruitment agency for government jobs. And U.S. President Donald Trump says America can stop business and decouple its economy with China. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has held a meeting with senior ministers and officials to discuss ways to boost manufacturing and global imprint of Indian toys. He said, India is home to several toy clusters and thousands of artisans who produce indigenous toys which not only have cultural connect, but also help in building life skills and psychomotor skills among children at an early age. Mr. Modi said, such clusters should be promoted through innovative and creative methods. It was informed that the Indian toy market has huge potential and can bring a transformative change in the industry by promoting vocal for local under the Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign. The Prime Minister said, focus should be on use of technology and innovation and also towards manufacturing quality products that meet global standards. Highlighting importance of toys in moulding a child's mind, Mr. Modi said, toys aligned with Indian culture and ethos should be used as pedagogical tools across all Anganwadi centres and schools. He suggested that youth should be engaged to come up with innovative designs and toys that can instil a sense of pride towards national goals and achievements. The Prime Minister noted that toys can be an excellent medium to further the spirit of Ek Bharat, Shreshta Bharat. He exhorted that toys should reflect Indian value system and culturally established environment-friendly approach. Mr. Modi also asked tourism as a tool to be used to promote India's culture, especially in regions which are renowned for handicraft toys. The Prime Minister also emphasized the need to organize hackathons for youth and students for innovations in toy technology and design, including online games to reflect Indian ethos and values. He said... India should tap the huge potential in digital gaming arena and lead the sector by developing games that are inspired from Indian culture and folk tales. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh reviewed the overall security scenario in eastern Ladakh. All important aspects of the border row with China in eastern Ladakh were discussed in great detail. The meeting also deliberated on future course of approach in dealing with the situation. India and China have held several rounds of military and diplomatic talks in the last two and a half months. The Ministry of External Affairs this week said both sides had agreed to resolve outstanding issues in an expeditious manner and in accordance with the existing agreements and protocols. The meeting was attended by National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat, Army Chief General M. M. Naravane, Navy Chief Admiral Karambir Singh and IF Chief, Air Chief Marshal R.K.S. Badhuria. India has strategically rejected the reference to Jammu and Kashmir in the joint press release of the second round of China-Pakistan Foreign Minister's strategic dialogue. In response to a media query, External Affairs Ministry spokesman Anurag Srivastav said, Jammu and Kashmir is an integral and inalienable part of India. And the country expects the parties concerned to not interfere in matters that are internal affairs of India. The spokesman said India has repeatedly conveyed its concerns to both China and to Pakistan on the projects in the so-called China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which are in the territory of India that has been illegally occupied by Pakistan. Health and Family Welfare Minister Harsh Vardhan has said that the country will have a vaccine against the deadly coronavirus by the end of this year. 
He told reporters that one of the three COVID-19 vaccine candidates has entered the third phase of the preclinical human trial. दुनिया के अंदर करीब 26 ऐसे वैक्सीन कैंडिडेट्स हैं जो कि क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स के फेजेस में पहुंच गए हैं और भारत के अंदर जो कैंडिडेट्स थोड़ा सा ज्यादा आगे बढ़ गए हैं उनकी संख्या लगभग आधा दर्जन के करीब है उसमें से भी तीन जो है वो विशेष रूप से क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स के फर्स्ट फेज सेकेंड फेज थर्ड फेज तक पहुंच गए हैं और जिस प्रकार से हम उनकी प्रोग्रेस को विश्लेषण करते हैं हमें पूरा विश्वास है कि इसी साल के अंदर वो ट्रायल्स पूरे होंगे उनके रिजल्ट देश के और दुनिया के सामने आएंगे और मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि हमें सफलता भी इसमें मिलेगी Head of National Task Force on COVID-19, Dr. V.K. Paul said the vaccine candidate entering the third phase has yielded encouraging results in the initial phases of its trial. Dr. Paul said that the other two vaccines are currently in phase one or two of their preclinical trials. Dr. Harshvardhan inaugurated a 10-bedded makeshift hospital at NDRF base in Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh, yesterday. Union Home Secretary has written to all chief secretaries reminding them that there are no restrictions on interstate and intrastate movement of persons and goods. The letter draws attention of the states to para 5 of unlock 3 guidelines. This para clearly states that no separate permission, approval or e-permit will be required for such movement of persons and goods for cross land border trade under treaties with neighboring countries. The Home Ministry has issued standard operating protocol SOP for international travel on non-scheduled commercial flights under the Vande Bharat scheme and air transport bubble arrangement. The SOP states that persons wanting to travel to India on the Vande Bharat flights will register themselves with the Indian missions in the country where they are stranded or residing along with necessary details as prescribed by the External Affairs Ministry. Such registration may not be required on flights operating under air transport bubbles arrangement. Persons will travel to India by non-scheduled commercial flights as allowed by the Civil Aviation Ministry and ships as allowed by Department of Military Affairs or Shipping Ministry. Priority will be given to compelling cases. The course of travel as specified by the carrier will be borne by the travelers. The recovery rate from COVID-19 has improved further to reach 74.69% yesterday. During the last 24 hours, 63,631 COVID patients have recovered. With this, a total of over 22,22,000 people have recovered in the country so far. Presently, the total number of active cases in the country is over 6,97,330. The case fatality rate continues to show steady decline and now stands at 1.87%. Minister of State for Health Ashwini Kumar Chaube has said eight permanent RT-PCR labs will be set up in eight districts of Bihar to intensify corona testing. These labs will be set up in eight districts. Meanwhile, the Bihar government has ordered to open fruit and vegetable shops from 6 to 10 a.m. from today. Similarly, meat and fish shops will also be open for four hours only in the morning. Earlier, these shops were allowed to open in the evening also. In Bihar, the recovery rate of COVID-19 has reached 80%. Recovered patients is more than positive cases in the last 24 hours. During this period, 3,531 patients were discharged from hospitals after treatment, while 2,238 fresh positive cases were reported. Meanwhile, a new 500-bed COVID hospital at Behta in Patna will be operational from today. This hospital has been built under PM Cares Fund. In Maharashtra, a highest single-day spike of 14,492 new coronavirus cases was reported yesterday. A health official said 297 COVID-19 patients succumbed to the disease yesterday. A report. There are now 1,69,516 active cases as more than 4,80,000 patients have been discharged after recovery in the state. In Mumbai, 1,134 new cases and 32 deaths were reported yesterday. The death toll in the island city has gone above 7,300 mark. The number of active cases in Mumbai now stands at 18,301. 
So far, 35,66,288 tests have been carried out in the state. Meanwhile, State Home Minister Anil Deshmukh has said that the government has taken note of the recent guidelines announced by the center removing all restrictions on interstate and intrastate movement of goods and people. Kunal Shinde, AIR News, Mumbai. In Gujarat, 1,212 new cases of COVID-19 were recorded yesterday. Our correspondent reports the recovery rate remains at 80%. More than 16,95,000 tests have been carried out in the state. Record 75,258 tests were carried out yesterday. Total cases of COVID-19 in the state have gone up to 85,678. At present, 14,538 active cases in the state, out of which 85 patients are on ventilator. At the other end, 980 patients have been discharged from various hospitals after recovery. With this, the total patients recovered from COVID-19 have gone up to 68,257. 14 patients have lost their lives yesterday, taking the total death due to COVID-19 in the state up to 2,883. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. In Madhya Pradesh, the number of COVID-19 cases has gone up to 51,866 after 1,226 new cases were reported in the past 24 hours. With 21 patients succumbing to the infection during the day, the death toll rose to 1,206. More from our correspondent. 872 coronavirus patients were discharged from the hospitals yesterday, taking the number of recovered cases in the state to 39,399. There are now 11,261 active cases in Madhya Pradesh. Meanwhile, in view of the increasing corona infection among prisoners, the state government has decided that the prisoners will now be sent to jail only after the corona test. 14 temporary jails have been set up in the state because of the spread of corona infection. New prisoners are being sent to these temporary Sanjeev Sharma, AIR News, Bhopal. Odisha has further ramped up testing to 61,379 last Friday, taking the total number of such clinical examination of COVID-19 to 12,33,805. Meanwhile, 52,276 cases have recovered from the infection against a rising number of positive cases, which has jumped to 75,537. While the active case count has increased to 22,809, the number of COVID-19 deaths has also gone up to 399, a report. The district of Khorda, hosting the capital city of Bhubaneswar, continues to ride the crest now with 443 infections. However, briefing media, Mr. Sanat Kumar Mohanty, the district collector, has revealed that as much as 74% of the rural areas of the district are free from COVID-19 infection. On the other hand, the Bhubaneswar Municipal Commissioner, Mr. Prem Chandra Chaudhary, reflecting on the COVID-19 situation within the limits of the municipal area, has said that while the city has registered a positivity rate of 6.29%, the Recovery rate has also shot up to 61.80%. Girish Chandra Das, EIR News, Bhuvaneshwar. In Karnataka, 7,330 new COVID-19 positive cases were reported during the last 24 hours, taking the total tally to 271,876. At the same time, 7,626 people recovered and were discharged from various hospitals, after which the total discharges have gone up to 1,84,568. With this, the state recovery rate increased to 67.88%. At the same time, 93 patients lost their life, and the total fatality has increased to 4,615, and mortality rate has gone down to 1.69%. More from our correspondent. According to the State Health Bulletin, 82,677 active COVID patients are taking treatment in various hospitals in the state, among them 727 are in ICU. A record number of 58,618 swab samples were collected across the state and the total tests have gone up to 23,73,103. Meanwhile, the Karnataka government transferred the Mysuru Zilla Panjait Chief Executive Officer Prasant Kumar Mishra, who allegedly abetted suicide at the Nanjengo Talikal Talk Officer Dr. S. R. Nagendra. In this connection, an FIR has been registered against Prasant Kumar Mishra. Mysuru Deputy Commissioner Abhiram Jishankar will hold the additional charge of Chief Executive Officer post until further orders. Or Murthy, AER News, Bengaluru. 
In Tamil Nadu, the total lockdown is being observed today as intensified curbs are enforced during all Sundays since long to check overcrowding in public places. A report from our correspondent. Since the early stages of the reporting of COVID-19 cases in Tamil Nadu, Chennai continues to bear the maximum case load due to the high population density, more public and freight movement and a variety of other reasons. But the pattern began to change since the 20th of July, with Chengalpattu district exceeding the 10,000 mark, the first outside Chennai. It was soon followed by the other two districts contiguous to the state capital, namely Kanjipuram and Tiruvallur. Now Coimbatore, Madurai, Tutukudi, Teni and Virudhunagar are also in the club, and at least three others are in the race to join in just a few days. Nearly 84% of them have recovered. Jai Singh, AAR News, Chennai. The Aroge Setu app has started a new technological solution in order to help businesses and an economy to start functioning while being safe. The new open API service will enable organizations to check the status of Aroge Setu app of their employees and integrate into its various work-from-home features. The new service can be availed by organizations and business entities which are registered in India with more than 50 employees. In our series, Experts Speak on All India Radio, we bring you views of leading medical experts on COVID-19. Speaking to AIR News, Dr. Saurabh Mehrotra, consultant at Mental Health Division in Medanta Hospital, emphasized that people should indulge in positive addictions, namely reading books, music activities, exercising, including others. He said, special care should be taken not to overexpose oneself to excessive COVID-related news, which leads to anxiety related issues hum apne aap ko positive addictions mein engage kare jaise writing reading creative arts such as drawing painting gardening is tarike ki cheeze these all qualify as positive addictions music ye sab positive addictions hai ye stress reduce karne mein hamara bahut madad karte hain hum socially connected rahe ek dusre se telephone conversation kare baat kare logo se social media kam se kam istemal kare khas taur se news related to covid 19 you are listening to the morning news on all india radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on prime minister narendra modi asks ministers and officials to find out ways to boost manufacturing and global imprint of indian toys defense minister rajnath singh reviews overall security scenario in eastern ladakh health minister dr harshvardhan says country will have vaccine against coronavirus by the end of this year more than 22 lakh people have recovered from COVID-19 in the country so far. Minister of State in PMO Jitendra Singh says states and union territories can use common eligibility tests to be conducted by the National Recruitment Agency for Government Jobs. And US President Donald Trump says America can stop business and decouple its economy with China. For quick news updates round the clock, Follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. States and union territories can avail the Common Eligibility Test, CET, to be conducted by National Recruitment Agency, NRA, for job selection. Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh has said that the CET score can be shared with the recruiting agencies in the state and union territory administrations as well as public sector undertakings, and also later on with the private sector. This, he said, will actually help the recruiting agencies, including the state and union territory administrations, to save the cost and time spent on recruitment, while at the same time also be convenient and cost-effective for the young job aspirants. The minister said an arrangement in the form of Memorandum of Understanding could be put in place for using the CET score by these agencies and these organizations. He further revealed that the Department of Personnel and Training and he are in touch with many states and union territories, which has expressed their inclination to be a part of the sharing arrangement of common eligibility test score. He informed that most of the chief ministers are also quite enthusiastic and favorable to adopt this reform. Power Ministry has advised all power generating and transmission companies to charge late payment surcharge LPS at a rate not exceeding 12% per annum for all payments made under liquidity infusion scheme. The financial burden on discounts will ease out with this measure. In general, the applicable rate of 
Late payment surcharges is quite high, despite the fact that interest rates in the country have softened over the last few years. The rate of LPS in many cases ranges up to 18% per annum and has adversely impacted discoms during lockdown phase due to COVID-19. The pandemic has adversely affected the liquidity position of all stakeholders of power sector, especially distribution companies. A number of measures have been taken by the government to mitigate the adverse impact. In an effort to guard against fake news being circulated on various platforms, we bring you a segment on Fact Check and Myth Busters. It has been claimed by certain social media platforms that Railways has decided to hold salaries and pensions for the year 2020-21 due to a financial crunch. Indian Railways has categorically denied the claim and termed it to be completely false. It said that no such move has been discussed or been contemplated by the government. A six-member central team will visit Assam on the 26th of this month to assess the flood situation. The three waves of floods have affected lakhs of people this year. Participating in an AIR talk show last night, Commissioner Secretary in Revenue Department MS Manivannan said that the team will visit the affected areas. He said that the Assam government has sent interim flood damage report to the centre and has sought around 2,300 crore rupees to compensate flood damage. A three-day session of Madhya Pradesh Assembly will be held from 21st of next month. The Assembly Secretariat issued a notification in this regard yesterday. Assembly's Principal Secretary A.P. Singh said that during the session, three sittings of the House will be held between September the 21st and 23rd. The session was earlier scheduled to be held from July the 20th, but it was cancelled in view of the coronavirus pandemic. The last Assembly session was held on March the 24th, when Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan proved his majority on the floor of the House. Mr. Satpal Singh Sati has been appointed the Chairman of 6th State Finance Commission of Himachal Pradesh. The newly constituted commission will review the financial position of the panchayats and municipalities and devolution of resources to these institutions. According to a notification of the state government, Mr. Sati will enjoy the status of a cabinet minister. The tenure of the commission will commence from the date of issuance of the notification. The commission will make its report available by December the 31st, 2021, covering a period of five years from April the 1st, 2022 to March the 31st, 2027. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the advisor to the Lieutenant Governor, K.K. Sharma, has extended felicitations to the teachers from Jammu and Kashmir who have been selected for the prestigious National Award to Teachers 2020 announced by the Union Ministry of Education. In a message congratulating the teachers, the advisor said that the award given to them is the ratification of the good and outstanding work done by them in imparting education to the students and is also being role models to the student community. He said that these types of awards serve as a morale booster for others as well to strive for excellence and contribute their best in the educational field. The Union Ministry has selected Ruhi Sultana from Srinagar and Sunil Kumar from Udhampur for the prestigious National Award to Teachers 2020. A government school teacher from Ladakh has been selected for the National Awards to Teachers 2020. Head teacher of middle school Taknak Sakti in Karu block of Leh Ladakh, Sonam Gyalsan, has been selected for the prestigious National Award. An independent jury constituted by the Ministry of Education, Department of School Education and Literacy has selected the teachers for their excellence in the field of teaching with innovation and dedication. Mr. Sonam Gyaltsan made all efforts to build the confidence among the villagers about the government schools, facilitate the students at the school and improve the results. Sonam Gyaltsan spoke to our lay correspondent about his journey. Subject based classroom, जैसे English का एक classroom बनाया, Math का अपना classroom, teacher दिन भर उसी classroom में बैठे रहेगा सर, बच्चों को online teaching classes आजकल पढ़ाया जा रहा है, तो जैसे सत्ति ले से पास में है, तो वहाँ पे network काफी अच्छा रहता है, तो WhatsApp के through teacher हर classes आजकल ले रहे हैं, मैंने अपने एक pocket money से एक bus लिया था school के लिए, तो bus लेके उसको मैंने चलाया, तो government को department को बोल के department ने एक दो महीने के लिए मेरे को पहले शुरू शुरू में driver भी दे दिया, अगर बच्चों के लिए transportation का बड़ा facilities हम दिया जाएगा, मेरे को लगता है कि enrollment का बहुत बड 
Sonam Gyalson also utilized ITBP civil action program to take his students to Bharat Darshan. Taknak Sakti is one of the longest villages in the Leh district. In three years, the enrollment of students rose from four to 103 now. This depicts the change scenario of government schools in Ladakh. U.S. President Donald Trump has said that America can stop business and decouple its economy from China. In an interview to a TV channel, he said the U.S. does not have to do business with China. In reply to a question on decoupling the U.S. economy with China, Trump said if China does not treat the U.S. fairly, he will certainly do that. You're asking a second question. Would you ever just decouple, not do business with China? Because, you know, we don't have to. Well, it's something that if they don't treat us right, I would certainly think. In June, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin had said a decoupling of the U.S. and Chinese economies will happen if U.S. companies are not allowed to compete on a fair and level basis in China's economy. A pair of gold-plated spectacles believed to have been worn by Mahatma Gandhi and presented as a gift in the 1900s have broken all records for a United Kingdom auction house by selling for 2 crore 55 lakh rupees or 2 lakh 60 thousand pounds. The glasses, which were dropped through the letterbox of East Bristol auctions in Hanham, southwest England, four weeks ago, were estimated to fetch between 10,000 pounds and 15,000 pounds. But the online bids for the lot kept multiplying to finally go under the hammer of the six-figure sum. The unnamed new owner of the spectacles is an elderly man from Mangotsfield, South Gloucestershire, in southwest England, who will split the two lakh sixty thousand pounds with his daughter. U.S. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden and his Indian origin running mate Kamala Harris have greeted the Hindu community in the United States. India and around the world on the occasion of Ganesh Chaturthi. Now let us take a look at the today's weather update. The national capital Delhi may witness generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature was recorded at 26 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 35 degrees. Mumbai will experience a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The minimum temperature was 25 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 29. Chennai will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The temperature will hover between 28 and 35 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The temperature will stay remain in between 26 and 32 degrees Celsius. On to the north in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature in Jammu was 23 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 33 degrees Celsius. In Gilgit, the temperature will hover between 19 and 37 degrees Celsius. The city will have mainly clear sky. In Muzaffarabad, mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening or night. The minimum temperature was 20 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 35 degrees. And now an overview of today's newspapers. India tests a million samples in one day, reports the Hindustan Times. The Home Ministry has directed states not to curb transport of goods and people, writes the Sunday Times. The Sunday Statesman leads with the headline, Park admits Daud Ibrahim in Karachi imposes sanctions. Vary of FATF ban, Park admits Daud resides in Karachi, reports the Sunday Pioneer. First time Daud on a park list, but denial option open, headlines the Sunday Express. The news of BSF killing five park intruders on Punjab border is carried on the front pages of most dailies. Five park intruders shot along IB in Taran Taran is the Sunday Tribune headlines. ISIS terrorist with IEDs held in Delhi, major terror strike averted, reports Sunday Pioneer. First pushback, 23 senior Congress leaders stand up. Right to Sonia Gandhi calling for sweeping changes from top to bottom is the lead headline in the Sunday Express. CBI tries to recreate Sushant Singh Rajput crime sequence, writes Sunday Pioneer. And finally, Hindustan Times carries a report of a 50 kg ovarian tumor removed from a woman's body at a Delhi hospital. The woman has recovered and is set to go home soon. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi asks ministers and officials to find out ways to boost manufacturing and global imprint of Indian toys. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh reviews overall security scenario in eastern Ladakh. Health Minister Harshwardhan says country will have vaccine against coronavirus by the end of this year. 
More than 22 lakh people recover from COVID-19 in the country so far. Minister of State and PMO Jitendra Singh says, States and union territories can use common eligibility tests to be conducted by National Recruitment Agency for government jobs. And US President Donald Trump says, America can stop business and decouple its economy with China.